a new band of rebels arose who were determined to carry the fight to Jerusalem. The Sicarii. To the Sicarii. Anyone who wasn't fighting the Romans was a collaborator and worthy of death. Many were slain every day. And the fear men were in was worse than the calamity itself. All right, uh, Shalom. First and foremost, we give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. We got we got a nice topic to deal with today. Um, a real nice topic to deal with today. It's kind of a topic we've been dealing with over the over, over the course of the last couple of weeks. Um, over the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of dealing with this topic. Um, and it keeps coming up. We got some guy, some dude who calls himself. Honor and Humility SDL. I think he called himself Malachi or something like that. Um, this individual called himself, called the name of the channel Honor and Humility SDL, but the way he addressed us showed absolutely no honor or humility. Showed nothing but pride and arrogance, so I believe he should probably change the name of his channel to Pride and Arrogance St. Louis. Um, that would probably be far more suitable for the, the arrogant and proud spirit that the man bears who did an entire video predicated upon either a lie, either an outright and blatant lie, or it, or a total butchering and misunderstanding of words that uh, I myself had said. So we're going to deal with that today through the spirit and the power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. We are going to further put the nail in the coffin and put to bed this virgin birth lie and doctrine that some of our people are still so ignorantly believing and wholeheartedly swearing by. In truth, it was astonishing to me how many people who know their Hebrew Israelites have the nerve to actually believe in this and, and teach this and swear by this with the with the boldness that they do. It was quite, you know, taken aback. I was taken aback by the situation. So we're gonna get into this and we're gonna just address some of the statements that this man made, the erroneous, unlearned statements, you know, that he made. And it's funny because he kept, you know, repeating throughout the course of the video, and he kept. You know, he kept doing certain things throughout the course of the video, which is uh, uh, tactics that are very, very consistent with, uh, you know, something a, a politician, what a politician would do. Just overtly trying to go out of your way to discredit the, your opponent to make yourself look better, irregardless of the truth in the statement that you was making. You know, you said somebody's not qualified to teach and shut down, but we are going to prove through the spirit and power of your how about some Yahweh Shai. You are not qualified to teach, and you need to shut down. You are nothing new. What do I say? What do I mean when I say you are nothing new? You are a, a, a fruit of some washed-up Midwest-based Negroes that have taught some form of Christianity with the the basis of understanding that we are the people of the Bible, like so many bootleg Midwest Israelite groups, and you have an envy uh, burning in your bones coming from your elders of the elders of one West. And the reason why you have it is simply because why so many people have it against one West is because they're envious of the fact that one West gets all the shine and the rest of you guys, no matter how much longer you allege you did it, your, your elders were teaching from one West and nobody gives a damn about y'all knows about y'all or, you know, or cares. You know, you spent the first 10 minutes of your video crying, you know, but then you tried to play it cool. And that whole first 10 minutes was of you crying was just you telling on yourself on how you are a product of somebody who was envious of the work that was done out of 1 West 125th Street, which has brought the masses of our people in through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Right? You also said that we couldn't read through uh, uh, the story without jumping, which we did. We, we, then, we, went, we got a video on Matthew 1, and we got a video on Luke uh, uh, three or what is it? One Luke one Salakia dealing with the whole thing the whole way through without jumping. So you again, you did it all based upon a lie, and the main lie that you are propagating was that um, uh, that 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 I said that the Holy Spirit is when you get an elevated sex drive. Just say the Holy Spirit is when a nigga get horny. You're saying that I said that that's when what I said the Holy Spirit was. Give me Matthew 4 and 1. I never said that that is exactly what the Holy Spirit is. I said the Holy Spirit is the force that compels and influences things. Like you said, it's the power of the Most High. The power of the Most High compels people to do things and influences people to do things for the Most High's purpose. So in that instance, in the instance of the conception of who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shai, in that instance, 
It was putting that spirit on Joseph to go and have sex with Mary. That's what that was in that instance, to ensure that that egg that Mary had was fertilized with the holy and righteous seed that Joseph had of the line of David to ensure that the Messiah, Hamashiach Yahweh would be born. That's what the Holy Spirit was in that instance. So you predicating yourself upon a lot. Listen, I'm not, listen, I'm not even going to call it a lie. I'm going to call it you misunderstood what I said. Because if I called it a lie, then that would make you a false witness. And that would make you bearing false witness unto the sin of blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, which is unforgivable, which will make you guilty of what you tried to crucify me for. But that's all right. I don't need to do that. Because we are going to prove you are a Holy Ghost blasphemer. I don't need to do it through false witness. You are an outright Holy Ghost blasphemer. And you need to shut down. Because you aren't doing anything but teaching, as you said, the same suit warmed up that we learned in the Catholic Church minus mary worship short of worshiping mary that's the only thing you're doing different than the catholic church all right let's go to matthew 4 first because this is going to prove what the holy spirit is and this is going to prove that the holy spirit didn't impregnate mary go ahead matthew chapter 4 verse 1 uh-huh then was Yahweh shy led up of the spirit he was led up of the spirit read into the wilderness into the wilderness joseph was led up in the spirit to go have sex with mary the Holy Spirit led Joseph, I mean, led Yahweh Shai into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit compels and makes things happen for the most high's purpose. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's how it operates. So that's how I said it operated in the instance of the conception of the Lord. That's what I was talking about. Not that the Holy Spirit is when a nigga get horny, as you so eloquently put it, which is a lie. All right. Or no, no, no. It was a misunderstanding. I'm going to say it's a misunderstanding. It's a misunderstanding, okay? That's what it is. You misunderstood what I said, so I'm clarifying that, all right? What I meant by that. You see what I'm saying? So if that's what the Holy Spirit does, the Holy Spirit didn't impregnate Yahweh Shah to get Yahweh Shah to go up into the wilderness. It influenced him. Its power guided him to do that, just like it guided Joseph to plant a seed in Mary, saying uh, Joseph isn't the Messiah's father, is actually blasphemy. Not what we did. And I'm going to prove that. Let's go to Matthew 1 and 18. Let's go to Matthew 1 and 18, and then we're going to go to Deuteronomy 22. All right? Matthew 1 and 18. Uh -huh. Now the birth of Yahweh Shai, the, the birth of Yahweh Shai, read. Was on, the, was on this watch mm -hmm. when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Uh-huh. Before they came together, uh -huh. she was found with the, the And we're going to deal with that came together, that nonsense you said about that. But she was found with child, read. Of the Holy Spirit. Point that I wanted to amplify that. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 23. Point I wanted to amplify in that instance is what? She is his espoused wife. We read this in the last one. You read this in your video. And then you mentioned it. We read it in our video. But you didn't deal with the key point of this and that. And understanding that she is his espoused wife. And understanding the law about an espoused wife. So somebody give me a Deuteronomy 23. 2 and 23 to 24. This is Deuteronomy 22 and 23. Uh-huh. It says, if a damsel that is a virgin uh -huh. be betrothed unto that husband. If a damsel is, that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband. She was betrothed unto a husband. Read. And a man find her in the city uh -huh. and lie with her. Read. And lie with her. Read. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate uh -huh. of that city. Uh-huh. And ye shall stone them. And yet, and you shall stone them. Read on. With stones, uh -huh. that they die. That they die. Read on. They're worthy of death. Read on. The damsel, because she cried not, uh -huh. being in the city. Read on. The man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife. And the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife, she's already considered his property, his wife. So if she became pregnant by any other mechanism outside of by that man, that would have been adultery according to that law. So you saying that the Holy Ghost impregnated her is you bearing blasphemy, which is a despicable lie against the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost is some form of adultery. You are a blasphemy. That's why I don't have to go off the fact that you bore false witness unto me in that regard. You outrightly blaspheme the Holy Ghost with no issue because you were led by some old washed up backwoods niggas who was influenced by the Christian church. Quite frankly, that's what's going on. Say what you will about my elders, but guess what? At least they're not blasphemers of the Holy Ghost 
talking about the elders of One West who didn't go with Comfy, because of course that would be a black. Ariana's a blasphemer of the Holy Ghost, but they didn't all do that. All right, and they taught us a right in many ways. Did they have their shortcomings? Of course they did. All right, anybody who says anything otherwise of that is a damn fool. But men have time before they go off where they do good deeds and good works. Okay, and they sure didn't teach us this blasphemous, idolatrous Roman Catholic doctrine of this immaculate conception. And don't play words from uh, look up immaculate conception. You know what we're talking about virgin birth, immaculate conception, miracle, whatever you niggas want to call it. It's not in the Bible, and we're proving it. Because if it was, you're convicting righteous principalities, the power of the Most High, of a sin worthy of death. How could you do that? That don't even make no goddamn sense. Right? But you said we're not qualified to teach because we don't do our research. No, sir, you don't do your research. You made the statement two different times in the video that Heli is Mary's father. Stop it, Mary. Oh, yeah, just a little bit, girl. Look, it's all good. It's all good. Your daddy, he lying, going to trip. You said that in the video. Sir, I'm going to need you to prove to me he lies is Mary's father. I challenge anybody to prove to me that he lie is Mary's father. I challenge anybody to prove to me that Mary is of the line of David. I challenge anybody to prove to me that Mary is even of the tribe of Judah. Prove it. I dare any of y'all to prove it. Show it to me in the Bible. Show it to me. Give me Luke 1 and 27. Somebody show me in the Bible where Mary is of the line of David. She's the daughter of Eli. She's of the tribe of Judah. Show it to me in the Bible, please. I dare anybody. Boldly in the spirit and power of Yahweh, Shema, Mashiach, Yahweh, Shai. Boldly. Show it to me. Prove it to me. I'm going to tell you this right now before you even bother. You can't do it. It's impossible. Go ahead. Now, hold on. Now, if you can't prove to me Mary is of the tribe of Judah, if you can't prove to me that Mary is of the line of David, then what does that mean? That means that Joseph would have have to been the Messiah's father. That's right. Because if he wasn't, then how can the Messiah be of the line of David? How can all of those Davidic prophecies come to pass if he doesn't have a, a, a flesh and blood relative that's of the seed of David. And it ain't Mary. We're going to prove it. Give me Luke 1 and 27, please. Luke 1 and 27. Uh-huh. To a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph. Whose name was Joseph, read. Of the house of David. Joseph is of the house of David. Not Mary. Joseph is a... It never says that Mary is of the house of David in the Bible. Read. It says... And the virgin's name was Mary. The virgin's the virgin was espoused to Joseph of the house of David, and that virgin's name was Mary. That's what that virgin's name was. Why is that virgin's name Mary? Is Mary what 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 who is the first woman named Mary in the Bible? Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron. Miriam is a Levitical name. That's what that's consistent with. Who is the only relatives we know Mary has in the Bible? Elizabeth and John the Baptist. Those are Levites. Don't y'all find that funny? Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the book of Luke 3 and 23. Please. See, but we don't study and we don't research, right? You don't study and you don't research. Because if you believe Luke 3 is talking about Mary, you've been lied and deceived to by the white man. And I'm not going to say that I haven't believed that. I didn't believe that at one point in time. But if all you do is read the Bible, you'll never see Mary get mentioned at all. In that situation. And there is a reason why Mary is never mentioned at all. Because that ain't her people. So go ahead. This is Luke 3 and 23. Mm -hmm. And Shai himself began to be about 30 years of age. Speak up a little bit. Slots. This is Luke 3 and 23. Uh -huh. And Yahweh Shai himself began to be about 30 years of age. Being as was supposed the son of Joseph. Uh -huh. Which was the son of. Uh, Heli was as supposed the son of Joseph, which is the son of Heli. We're gonna deal with that as supposed in a second, because I as supposed Catholic niggas are flipping out. That's all right. As supposed the son of Joseph, the son of Heli. Now give me Matthew one. Give me Matthew one and the sixteenth. Uh, so it just says that Joseph is the son of Heli, right? 
This is St. Matthew 1 and 16. Uh -huh. And Jacob begat Joseph. And, but wait a minute. Now it says that Jacob begat Joseph. So what is it? Did, is he the son of Heli or did Jacob begat Joseph? That's the question. I'll give you the answer. The answer is yes to both. He is the son of Heli and Jacob begat Joseph. How is that possible? Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. God, how can how can a man have two legitimate fathers lineages? How? How is it possible? But it's in the law. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is why he has two lineages in the Bible. It don't say, show me where it's talking about Mary's line in Luke 3. If you can do that, I'll, we'll shut down like you asked. And if you can't do that, you shut down. Because you don't know what the hell you're talking about, quite frankly. It clearly says Joseph. All right, clear. So any other top Christian Step, scholars, you would have to add step into the Bible. Con, you would, you would add, like you said, you have to like do try to add again. Yeah, yeah you again. Would have to add I don't got. To the Bible. I don't got to add again. You got to add step though, nigga. That's what you got to do. No, I was I was gonna Go say ahead, I um, um I missed my point, but um oh all the top all the top Hebrew Israelites, all the top so called Christian scholars. They say they believe that that's her lineage. They believe that she's a Judite, but there's no proof. That's right. The, the, scripture, the scriptures are clear that Joseph is of, is of the house of David, and the scriptures are clear that both of these are his lineages. That's why Mary is never mentioned. Furthermore, women don't, they didn't trace women's uh, line back. They don't, yeah, have they, don't, they, don't, they don't have the record. They don't do the record of women's lineages like that. The most they'll do is a woman's grandfather. That's the most you'll really see in the scriptures, unless in the case of Elizabeth, when it says she's of the daughters of Aaron, which you don't trace her lineage all the way back and just say she came from Aaron. You see what I'm saying? So that's how it worked. And that's the thing. Like we said, if you read these accounts, you're not going to believe in a virgin birth if you just read it without any prior knowledge of it. Just like if you read this account, you will never believe that this was Mary's lineage. You had Somebody had to tell you that in order for you to believe that. And that's why you can't get out of your mind. But you got the nerve to say, that's saying that the Messiah was not born of a virgin is um is a stronghold. But come on, dude, you teaching the same thing they teaching in the churches. You mean to tell me that's not more of a stronghold? That's like it's ridiculous, but it's all right. Pride and arrogance STL, that is all right. Okay. You can call me Chico the Barge. You can say I'm not qualified. You can do all that. That's fine. We're just gonna show you in the Bible that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And we're going to further prove it. Go ahead back with Deuteronomy 22, 5 to 6. Go ahead. 5 to 6. 5 to 6. Now, this is Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that. Salakia. Deuteronomy um, 25. 25 to 26. Salakia. This is Deuteronomy 22 and 25. Uh huh. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field. No, 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 no. That ain't what I mean. 25. 25, 5 to 6. Not 22. Salakia. I call for 22. It's 25, 5 to 6. <clears throat> You're all right. This is Deuteronomy 25 and 5. Uh -huh. If brethren dwell together and one of them die mm -hmm. and have no child, uh -huh. the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. That's right. That's he lie. Mm -hmm. He lie died before uh, he raised up a seed. So his wife had to marry a near kinsman, which according to the lineages, they were of near kinship to each other, just like in the case of Ruth. Read. It says, yeah, it's a lot. It says, her husband's brother shall go in unto her uh -huh. and take her to him to wife. Exactly. So Jacob took Heli's wife to wife after Heli died without children. That's the only explanation for these two lineages. Read. And perform the duty of an husband's he, brother unto her. Jacob performed the duty of a husband's brother unto her, raised her up a seed, and his name was Joseph. Y'all was sopping and he could read. Verse 6, and it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth, the firstborn which she beareth, read, shall succeed. So, so like, what's that? Succeed. Yeah, kind of, so like, succeed in the name of his brother. Shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is exactly why in Luke 3 it says the son of Heli. It didn't say that Heli begat Joseph like it does in Matthew 1 that Jacob begat Joseph because physically Jacob begat Joseph. But according to the law, Joseph is continuing the line of Heli. He's being called after the name of Heli because that's how the law works. That's why it says Joseph, the son of Heli, as was supposed. 
That's why it says, as was supposed. Because though Jacob was his father, he is supposed to be Heli's son, according to the law. Finish that. That his name be not put out of Israel. Uh -huh, that his name be not put out of Israel. So that's why he's called the son of Heli, that Heli's name be not put out of Israel. But he was physically the son of Jacob, a near kinsperson of Heli, according to both of their lineages. You can substantiate that they are near, near kins people. Just like in the case of Boaz. Boaz wasn't the brother of Ruth's husband that had passed, but he was the closest near kins person who was willing to take on Ruth. When you read the story, we all know the account. If you don't read the account, if you don't know the account, go read the account in the book of Ruth. So that's why Joseph has two lineages. That's why those are two, a lineage in Matthew 1 and a lineage in Luke 3. For no other purpose. Again, Mary is not mentioned within that lineage. So to say that that's Mary's lineage is you adding unto the Bible, point blank period, and you taking some white man's word for an understanding of the scriptures. That's not in the Bible, right? So give me Galatians 4 and 4. So it's going now with y'all understanding this, it's going to give y'all a new understanding on what certain scriptures really mean so you can get the full quantification of them scriptures through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh Shah. Let me let me read this real quick. Uh -huh. This is from uh, Julius Africanus, uh, who understood who understood this roughly two hundred circa A.D. All right, it's, this is uh, much closer to the time of Yahweh Shai than we are in now. So go ahead. Con, it says, "Thus then we shall find Jacob and Heli were uterine brothers. Were uterine brothers. Go ahead. Though of different families, mm -hmm. and of these, the one Jacob having having taken the wife of his brother Heli." Who died childless, begat by her the third Joseph, his his son by nature and by account. By nature and by account, but by law, that's Heli's son. There's historians, early church fathers that substantiate and go along and understand this. Read. But well, no, but we don't research, y'all. Go ahead. Whence also it is written, and Jacob begat Joseph. Mm -hmm. But according to the law, he was the son of Heli. For Jacob, his brother, raised up seed to him, wherefore also the genealogy deduced through him will not be made void, which the evangelist Matthew in his um, enumeration gives thus, and Jacob begat Joseph. But Luke, on the other hand, says, who the son, as was supposed. For this, too, he adds, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mechi, for it was not possible more distinctly to state the generation according to law. And thus, in this mode of generation, he has entirely omitted the word begat to the very end. You see that? The son of all in Luke. But in Matthew, begat, 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 begat. Go ahead. Carrying back the genealogy by way of conclusion to Adam and to God. And I want to get another one, his pupil. This is uh, Eusebius. This is multiple scholars and multiple sources, man, that agree with this. Yeah, and he's a father. Study. It's a lot. Julius Africanus is the father of Christian chronology. All right? So he's solidified, certified, validated, and vindicated. You not. Okay, this is the writings from Eusebius, Ecclesiastical History. It says, Thus neither of the Gospels is in error, for one reckons by nature, the other by law. You see that? One by nature and one by law. You got Galatians 4 and 4? Hold no. on to that tight. Go ahead. Uh -huh. For the line of descent from Solomon and that from Nathan were so involved, mm -hmm. the one with the other by the raising up of children to child to the childless and 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 by, and by second marriages, that the same persons are justly considered to belong at one time to one and at another time to another. That is, at one time to the reputed fathers, at another time to the actual fathers. So that both these accounts are strictly true and come down to Joseph with considerable intricacy, indeed, yet quite accurately. All right. Um, that's pretty much on, on that. But you you guys can research that for yourself. Um, these are these are these are pro, well renowned, profound, uh, prestigious early church Christian scholars who substantiate this. Um, but it's but more more so than that, it's in the Bible. That's right. All right. But uh, it's, the only, it's the only thing that makes sense. But uh, with that in mind, yeah, Galatians four and four. Um, that was a uh, 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 the ecclesiastical history of Eusebius. Go ahead. This is Galatians four and four. Uh huh. But when the fullness of the time was come, when the fullness of the time was come, read. Yahweh sent forth his son. Sent forth his son. Read. 
Made of a woman, uh -huh. made under the law. Made under the law. That's why it's emphasized that he was made under the law. The law that he was made under is that law, the law in Deuteronomy uh, 25, 25 to 26 right there, or 5 to 6, like it. That's what that's about, that law. That's how he came to be, the same way how King David had came to be. When you read in the book of Ruth, a generation before, that's how he came to be. Read. That's it on that. That's it on that. So like it. So let's go to uh, Luke. Now let's go to Luke 1 and 3. Why did Luke write this genealogy? It's clear. He's going to tell you. Give me that, yeah, Luke 1 and 3 so we can understand why he wrote that genealogy as opposed to the one that Matthew wrote. Go ahead. St. Luke 1 and 3. Uh-huh. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things Luke. from the very first. Luke had a perfect understanding of everything because he knew everybody. He had got the accounts from everybody he was able to to compile that collection and then be able to you know line it out that's why he had it he's the one that got the information about zachariah zachariah's father you see what i'm saying elizabeth all that pre you understand what i'm saying because matthews uh, uh picks up where it picks up with um the genealogy going to joseph and the angel coming to joseph which had came to to joseph after mary had already conceived versus uh the angel that came to uh mary in luke which came to her before she she had conceived so he had a perfect understanding of everything. So that's why he he gave us the genealogy of Joseph according to law, right? So go ahead. Just all I need is is that verse, is three if, if that's it. Okay, go ahead. It says to write unto thee in order, most excellent the uh the the yeah, 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 Right. So let's skip to verse thirty six now. <laughs> right. Let's skip to verse thirty six. Verse 36. Uh-huh. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth. Thy cousin Elizabeth. Again, Mary is supposed to be in the line of David, which is not impossible for you to have a cousin of another tribe. That's not impossible. But the fact that she's a Judite is not reckoned in the Bible at all. And then the only people we know is her cousin Elizabeth, which is a Levite. Again, she has a Levitical name. Read. She has also conceived a son uh -huh. in her old age. Uh-huh. And this is the sixth month with her. Who right. was called Barry. Right. So skip to 39 now. Now watch this. Another piece of evidence that takes away from and adds to the potential that Mary was in particular a Levite, not a Judah. Huh. I'm not saying definitively she was a Levite because just like you can't prove she was a Judah definitively, I can't prove definitively she's a Levite. But the body of evidence points towards Levi far more than it does to Judah. No. And if you want to substantiate her, not only as just a Judah, but as a, a woman of the line of David, you're going to have to do a whole lot. And you're going to have to add a there. whole lot to the Bible because it's not there at all. So go ahead. Verse 39. Uh-huh. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. Uh -huh. She arose and went into the hill country, read. Into a city of Judah. Into a city of Judah. Meaning what? If she arose and had to go out into a city of Judah, she wasn't dwelling in the city of Judah. So if she was a Judite, but she was in the line of David, why is she not dwelling in a city of Judah? That's right. Now, if she was a Levite, she could be doing in any of the tribes land because we dwell throughout all the tribes. Right. And and Elizabeth and, and Zechariah being of the of the Levitical line that they from, it would make sense that they in Judah because they are of the family that was appointed unto the Judites. But Mary wasn't dwelling there. So all of that body of evidence works cohesively together to totally discredit Mary being a Judite, especially a Davidic Judite. So if she's not a Davidic Judite then you have no proof to say or you have no leg to stand on to substantiate the Messiah fulfilling Davidic prophecy. That's right. Period. That's right. The only way is through Joseph. That's right. So now what do you got? It all relies on the daddy. That's how our whole culture is set up. Period. That's right. Right? So Luke 3 is not talking about Mary's lineage, and you cannot prove it. It clearly says David pursuing to Jacob and Eli being brothers and him dying and raising up a seed unto him. Period. All right. <laughs> Made under the law, that law, that, that law. part. Mm -hmm. That's why it was as it's supposed, which is Heli's son. Genius, right? So let's go to Joe, uh, Judges 13 to 3 real quick. This guy also said, if they was already married, why would the angel go to Mary first? You supposed to go to the husband first. And why the angel ain't go to the father first? Why the angel ain't go to Joseph first? With the angel doing being out of order. Do you read the Bible? Do you read it at all? Talking about somebody don't study or research. You just... Talk about putting your foot in your mouth. You spouting out the side of your mouth, total BS, to try to help your argument using some type of Masonic 
uh, continually reiterating something to try to discredit your opponent, something that I didn't even say, something that you either ran with or just outright lying about. You're going to keep reiterating that, and in the midst of that, you're going to keep uh, uh, saying little dumb remarks out of the side of your mouth that shows how inadequate your understanding of the Bible is. Give me Judges. 13 and 3. He said, why did the angel go to Mary first and not her husband if they was married? Which, number one, the angel came to Mary first prior to them coming together. Everybody knows that. And then you interpolate and add into the scriptures the fact that when she walked in her cousin's house, that she had already, um, that she that she was already with child. When it don't say that, nowhere in there. It say that Elizabeth is with child. We understand that. We understand John the Baptist is older than Yahweh Shai. It say Elizabeth is with child, but it don't say nothing about Mary being with child. She says she knew she was with child. Or, or she knew she was going to be with child, rather. Don't say she knew she was with child. The Holy Spirit came unto her and gave her what the understanding that Mary has been chosen to be the vessel to carry the, the Messiah in uh, to the world. All right. But it don't say nothing about her emphatically knowing that this woman had a child within her. You can't read it in the Bible. Go ahead. It says this is Judges 13 and 3. Mm -hmm. And then the angel of the most high appeared unto the woman. Unto who? The woman. Unto the woman. Read that story. She come to the angel come to the woman first. Read. And said unto her, uh -huh. Behold, now thou art barren. Thou art barren, read. And bearest not, uh -huh. but thou shalt conceive uh -huh. and bear a son. You see that? That's the same way the angel came to her. Did she not have sex to bear that son? Was that man not a Messiah in his own right? Yes, he was. So what the hell are you talking about when that man is Samson, for those of y'all that don't know? Samson saved Israel. So he's a savior. Right? He ain't the ultimate savior that Yahweh Shai is, but he's a savior. So if he's a savior and the angel came to his mama and told his mama that she was going to conceive and bear a son, she had it by a man, which I believe his father's name was what? Eli or Elkanah? That's funny. So how is Yahweh Shai's case any different? And we already went through Luke, the Luke account and the Matthew account without stopping from top to bottom. We already went through both of those. Check the other videos. We just clearing up these loose ends. That this dude tried to come in and, and, and think he had points with. We just clearing that right up through the spirit of Prophet Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shah, showing these guys don't even know what they're talking about. If they can't prove Mary is of the line of David, then everything is out the window at that point. Joseph is wrecking two times, and you mean to tell me that was for no. Why wrecking Joseph at all uh, if he's not the father of anybody? Why is he wrecking it? Why is his genealogy mentioned at all? Why isn't only Mary wrecking? He shouldn't be wrecking at all if he ain't the daddy. That's stupid. That's that's literally pointless for them to do that. Go ahead. It, it, it's all right. If you ain't got it, it's fine. We know Samson was a savior. Anybody that read the Bible knows Samson was a savior. He saved us out of the hand of the Philistine. Point blank, period. So now he said he's the son of God. He's the son of God. Give me John 1 and 12. He's the son of God. All right. He's the son of God. You're right. He is the son of God. But watch this. Give me John 1 and 12. And you know these scriptures, so I don't know how why you would jump out the window and put your foot in your mouth to this degree, knowing you was going to get caught out there. Go ahead. This is John 1 and 12. Uh -huh. But as many as received him. As many as received you, how was I read? To them gave he power to become the sons of the Most High. So if we receive, if we in Christ, so to speak, or we in you, how was I, we in Hamashiach, then we have the power to be the sons of the Most High. Are we all virgin births too? Are we virgin births? Go ahead. Even to them that believe on his name. Uh-huh. We believe in the name of Yahweh Shai. So are we all born of virgins then too? Because we sons of God now. That don't make no kind of sense. And you got a lot of nerve hating on and trying to take shots at One West. Yet you speaking to Lashawan Kudash that One West amplified. That's right. Your elders ain't amplified that. Your elders is probably calling on Jesus Christ, God, Yahweh, Yahuwah, or some madness like that. But you saying Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, all of that. Yahweh Sop, he said Joseph's name in the Hebrew, Yahweh Sop. Well, if that's the case, why are you condemning the man that even pioneered that understanding? Now, the other scholars attested that true indeed, but no other Israelite group or, or anybody that comes from any other school of thought holds fast to that Lashon Kodash outside of one West period. So if you riding on the coattails of one West as far as language, but you're going to hate on them, you sound like a clown, bro, straight up and down. Shut down. You're not qualified to teach. Shut down. Mm -hmm. Right? So then let, let's go to uh, uh, Salakia. Let's go to Romans 8 and 14. Go to a second witness on this sons of God business. Right? So I, I'm, a, I'm in Yahweh Shai. I believe in the name of Yahweh Shai. 
Uh, so that make me a son of God. So does that mean I ain't got a daddy either? Made no kind of sense. Nigga, go ahead. 8 and 14. Romans 8 and 14. Uh-huh. It says, for as many are as led by the Spirit. As many are as led by the Spirit. Which I never said a spirit was getting horny. I said the spirit is what leads you. It led Joseph to have sex with that girl, which in that instance you could say the spirit led him to get horny and and and, have, and, and conceive a seed with that woman. Yes, but the spirit leading you, of course, is not limited to sexual intercourse. No idiot would say that. Come on, now. as many as are led by the spirit of Yahweh, read. They are the sons of Yahweh. They are the sons of Yahweh. They are the sons of the Most High. If you led by the spirit. So Yahweh Shah was led by the Spirit. He was he is the beginning of the creation of the Most High. Right? But he's not the only one that's led by the Spirit. He's the chief of those who are led by the Spirit. But just as he is led by the Spirit, the elect of the Lord are led by the Spirit. Are they all virgin births as well? Of course not. No dummy would say that. So you using the Son of God, logic and lie, or not not logic and lie, so like logic and rhetoric, it still doesn't prove your point because there are multiple sons of God and all of us have earthly fathers. That's retarded, quite frankly. This is St. John 10 and 34. Yahweh Shai answered them. Is it not written in your law? Is it not written in your law? Yahweh Shai said, is it not written in your law? Read on. I said, ye are gods. Ye are gods. Read. If he called them gods, uh -huh. unto whom the word of God came. Read. And the scripture cannot be broken. And that scripture cannot be broken, right? So go to Psalms 82 and 6. That's the scripture that he's referencing. So Yahweh Shai also recognizes the Israelites as the sons of God. Are all the Israelites immaculately conceived? Of course not. So let's go to that Psalms 82 and 6. It's a Psalms 82 and 6. And all that talking you did in that damn video with all the minimal amount of scriptures and an hour and a half you made me sit through you reiterating a dumbass a moot point and reading no Bible verses. That's ridiculous. Go ahead. Psalms 8 26. Yeah, pull it, pull it. Go ahead. It says, I have said, ye are God. Ye are God. We not only are we sons of God, we are gods. Read on. And of all of you <clears throat> are children of the most high. And we are the children of the most high, or the sons of the most high. That word there is bun. We are bun, banyam, sons of the most high. Period. All right. So that's retarded. We are the ones that the scriptures came to. We are the Israelites. We are the, the patrilineal descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we are sons of God. So again, that's a moot, moot point, right? So let's go to uh, so like it. Let's go to um, Deuteronomy 18 and 18. You said what? Hold that. Get Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Right? So he's got an issue with the fact. He's like, oh, you act like he was made like a nigga in Babylon. Uh, 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 what else he said? Uh, uh. You know, he was made like us. But you don't understand that the prophecy about him says he would be made like us. You got an issue with me saying he's going to be made like us, but that's exactly what Moses said. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I will rise them up a prophet uh -huh. from among their brethren. Read. Like unto thee. Like unto thee. Like unto thee. Among thy, from among thy brethren. What is a brother of an Israelite? Another person who is a flesh and blood patrilineal meaning they daddy is an israelite that's what your brother is in the bible according to the law so how can he be raising us up a prophet like unto his brethren like unto you when moses wasn't made by no virgin and he ain't had no daddy how was he our brethren and how was he like unto moses it doesn't make any sense go ahead and we'll put my words in his mouth uh-huh and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command And him. he shall speak unto him all that I shall command him. So he wasn't going to come into the world any different than any of us. He's going to be a prophet from amongst us like unto most. Right? That was it on that. Let's get Numbers 1 and 18 real quick. So in order for him to be of the line of David and of the tribe of Judah and an Israelite, there is one, there's only one way for you to be any of those things. Let's find out what that way is. While he's getting that too, again, uh, I think I brought this up before about how the scribes and Pharisees was always trying to catch it, how it shy up on, I mean, many different points as far as, you know, what he was pushing, what he was teaching, how they thought he was coming to change the laws, change the things that the prophets of old had said. Why did they never come to him and say, so, oh, so you the, you the, you the, you the, you the virgin birth boy? 
Yeah, so you mean you mean to tell me you the dude that was born of a, of, of a virgin? You supposed to be this dude that we've been waiting on. If they knew it, then they had no reason to question him of whether he was this person or not. And if they didn't know, then that means what? Marrying him just kept it a secret? Allegedly. And, Allegedly. That, and, and no, the whole Bible keeps it a secret because it's right. not brought up again in Ever. the Bible. Right. They don't bring this up. Nobody. And why doesn't Paul, the champion of the New Testament, after the Gospels, why doesn't he bring that up? Why isn't he ample? This is like if he's born of a virgin, like this is that's a pretty big deal. This miraculous thing. Why isn't anybody else harping on this and amplifying it and magnifying it and putting it in the way that y'all do? Why is it not being quantified the way that y'all doing it? Because it's just not in the Bible and it just didn't happen. <laughs> so go ahead. This is Numbers 1 and 18. Uh-huh. And they assembled all the congregation together uh -huh. on the first day of Read. the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their father. So what's your, so your Hawashai doesn't have a pedigree. If your Hawashai doesn't have a pedigree, how is he one of our brethren? He can't. He's not an Israelite or a Judite, let alone the seed of David, if he doesn't have a pedigree. You have to have a pedigree in order to substantiate that. Everybody called him a son of David. Why did they call him a son of David? Because he was a son of Joseph. If Mary was of David, they still wouldn't identify him as a son of David unless Joseph is his father, which, again, you can't prove Mary is of David, right? So let's get John real quick. Give me John 3 and 5 to 8. Because, look, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, and she was pregnant with the Holy Spirit. Cool. For sure. He was born of the Holy Spirit. I'm with you. I don't disagree. He was born of the Holy Spirit. But watch this. Let's see what he said out of his own mouth. Read. This is John 3 and 5. Uh-huh. Yahweh Shai answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Read. Except a man be born of water uh -huh. and of the Spirit. Except he be born of water and of the Spirit. Read. He cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So Yahweh Shai going to be the only one in the kingdom then because he was the only one that was born of the Spirit. Dummy. Any, all the elect is born of the spirit. So what are you talking about? Of course, yeah, I wish I was born of the spirit. And so are 144,000, 12,000 in every tribe of Israel, including the numerable multitude, the one third attached unto them, are born of the spirit. So yes, yeah, I wish I was born of the spirit. But he ain't the only, he ain't alone in that. All right? But you being a, 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 a in being living with Catholic dogma, you read born, he was born of the Holy Ghost, and you think that the Holy Ghost impregnated a woman, which would have been the Holy Ghost committing adultery in the highest, right? Instead, you're not looking at a spirit. You said we don't look at a spirit. You know, you're not looking at a spirit. Only thing is, uh, unlike Yahweh Shai, we got to come into this after we grow old. We're not born into this. We had to come into this after we grow old. We had to be born again through the spirit. Yahweh Shai was born like that automatically, born righteous automatically. And you taken away from you taken away from the, the feats that Yahweh Shah accomplished. The fact that Yahweh Shah was born just like we was born, and he was able to utilize his 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 um what's the word I'm looking for? Um his his pious observance of Torah to fight and ward off all temptation unto his death. The fact that he was able to do that and he was born like us is a is a is a is a um is a benchmark for all of us. To aim for what Yahweh Shai did, that we could all be able to do it instead of making excuses when we fall short. Well, damn, I mean, he didn't even have an earthly father. I had some wicked ass daddy, man. How, how am I supposed to be righteous? That's just a scapegoat, and you're building a, 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 a defense mechanism for your goddamn downfall when you make Yahweh Shai born of a virgin, a literal person who has never had sex. Of course, she didn't have sex before Joseph. But when she got pregnant, how Yahweh Shai was conceived is through her and Joseph coming together, having sex, just like every other Israelite ever. Every Israelite was born like that, period. You can't show me any different in Yahweh Shai's case, including, or he's not an Israelite, period. And the Holy Spirit committed adultery, according to you, which is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Now, the Spirit compelling things into order is not the Spirit impregnating Mary. Okay, Mary was impregnated by Joseph, period. Or else, how is your Howard Shah to line today? Can somebody explain that to me? Please. I want to understand how I'm a Davidite, I'm a Judite, I'm an Israelite, but I don't have a father. I need somebody to explain that. Don't even make no sense. Unfounded and unsubstantiated in the Bible. This this dude also had the nerve to say that. Give me uh, Matthew 1 and 18. 
Shatazama, give me the Greek. Strong G49. Um, 05. Give me that, please. Strong G4905 because this guy said that coming together means has sex. Before they came together or before, what it, it tell you right in their conjugal rights. Before they had sex. It wasn't, it wasn't before they was living together. <laughs> or before, what it, the, it, or before, what it, the, it, or before, what it, the, it. <laughs> We gonna see about that. Give me, give me, give me that degree. We gonna see what that means. Why lie? Why lie, bro? If you got the truth, why lie? That's that's all I wanna know. Why just outright lie about the meaning of words? Why add unto things and then accuse and point fingers at people for doing the same thing? Why lie? Maybe it's because you don't have the truth. Maybe it's because your understanding is flawed. Maybe because instead of honor and humility, you have proud and arrogancy. All right, and envy. Right, so give me that. Forty nine oh five, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Strong's G forty nine oh five. Uh huh. Uh, it's a center comi center comi. Mm hmm. Uh, to come together. To come together. Read. To assemble. To assemble. It didn't say nothing about sex. It says assembly. Read. It says uh, of conjugal cohabitation. Cohabitation meaning living together. There's no bearing on sex. It says living together. Conjugal cohabitation. Conjugal means marriage. Cohabitation means cohabitat meaning we are sharing the same habitat that's what that means they didn't stay together yet they haven't assembled yet but he has sexual or got a pregnant as so many black men have done before stop trying to take away from it because that's how your house was prophesied to be born the same way as us now here's the thing you said that that means sex well, let's, let's take a look at this word and how it's used throughout the bible and let's see if it has anything to do with sex how about we do that? I was gonna say while you did that, it says uh, you go to the definition. The word, the usage is come together of conjugal cohabitation, uh, come with to accompany. With. <clears throat> the definition is to convene, depart in company with, associate with, accompany or assemble. You know, uh, or with resort. So that ain't got nothing to do with sex. It got nothing to do with sex. It has everything to do with like the brothers said, living together. Um, or assemble. Yeah, assemble. You can say it was before they lived together, or you can say it was before they had their assembly and their public marriage. Either way, it's no sex. He got the milk before buying the cow. <laughs> yeah, like, period. Hey, hey. Like, like everybody's, you see what I'm saying? And you you think it's something wrong with that. Oh, you acting like it's like a nigga in Babylon. Like it's like, this is the thing, and I'm just going to come straight about it. When you start talking like that, you sound like on some low-key homo stuff. Like it's wicked for a man to have sex with a woman or something. Like that's something off about you having sex when that's what the most I commanded us to do with our women. Of course, not to be committing adultery, being off in the whoredom, but this woman is promised unto me. If you saying it's wrong to have sex with her, you want some borderline undercover homo stuff, bro. Point blank. This is first Corinthians eleven and eight. Eighteen. Eighteen. So no. It says, for first of all. When ye come together in the church. When you what? When ye come together in the church. Is this they having an orgy in the church? Is that what Paul is talking about? <laughs> According to you, they're having an orgy in the church. And that's what Paul is writing to them about. Before they came together or before what it was the, before they had sex. It wasn't it wasn't before they was living together. <laughs> For first of all, when ye come together in the church. When you what? And ye come together in the church. Is this they having an orgy in the church? Is that what Paul is talking about? <laughs> According to you, they're having an orgy in the church. And that's what Paul is writing to them about. The orgy they having in the church. Finish that. I hear they there be divisions among you. There's a division in the orgy. Eight people fucking on this side, eight people fucking on that side of them, apparently. According to you. Go ahead. And I partly believe it and, 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 and paul believes you know what them niggas in corinth is crazy i know they down there fucking in, in the church you see that you see what happens when we let you uh, uh, uh you rule the narrative people have an understanding like that if i if i follow your logic and what you said these words meant i would believe that in the church of corinth there's an orgy going on stop it please 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 stop it shut down you're not qualified to teach just go ahead and shut on down, brother. Go, uh, stay at 1 Corinthians. Give me 14 to 25. Just go ahead and shut that on down. 
them operations that you got going down there in St. Louis are heresies, damnable, blasphemous, all of that. You need to just go ahead and shut on down. All right? So go ahead and give me that. Let's let's take same, a look. Same chapter? Four, no, 14 to 25. You feel me? Let's go take a look at another way this word is used in the Greek, in the New Testament. It says 1 Corinthians 14 and 26. I always said then, brethren, when ye come together. When ye what? Come together. So the brethren are having a homosexual orgy. According to this man, there is a homosexual orgy that is continually going on in the church of Corinth. This is what's going on. Man, just stop. Again, shut down. You're not qualified to teach. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the Greek and you don't know the Hebrew. We're going to get to the Hebrew word that you butchered in order to try to dictate the narrative to fit your damn blasphemous, dogmatic, idolatrous doctrine. We're going to get to that in a minute. Go ahead. It says, every one of you have a song. Have Apparently, they're, they're singing songs when they have an origin and teaching doctrine having an origin, according to this Negro. This insane Catholic church infused Negro. Go ahead. At the tongue. Uh huh. At the revelation. Yeah, the revelations. Have an orgy. Imagine that. You ever had an epiphany? <laughs> At an interpretation, let all things. They got a breakdown. I got a breakdown in the middle of sex, in the middle of an orgy. I got a breakdown. <laughs> you ever just thought, hold on, baby, hold on one second. I got a, this most I just revealed to me. <laughs> Revelation 19 breakdown. <laughs> Shut down. You're not qualified to teach. Go ahead. Let all things be done unto edifying. What you're doing is not edification. What you're doing is furthering. You're, what you're edifying, actually, you are edifying. You're edifying a satanic stronghold. That's what you're edifying. And we're tearing it down through the spirit of power of Yahweh by showing right. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Wow. Period. Right? So that word does not mean have sex. That's been proved. And now, here's the question. When did Elizabeth at any moment say that Mary was with child? When did she say it? Prove it. Uh, just like you got to prove that he lies, Mary's daddy. Prove it. Show it to me in the Bible. Um, now, let's go to Hebrews. Give me Hebrews 2, 16 to 17. And then, Tazamar, you get it for me in the NLT real quick. Okay, because two, you have 16. 2, the 16th verse, and the 17th verse. Here's what you have to understand. Like we've been saying, Yahweh I was born the same way we was born. All right? And we're going to further bring out biblical evidence to prove that. You saying otherwise is against the scriptures. Okay? You are taking away from how magnificent it was that that man was born like us, but he didn't sin like us. You're taking away from that. You are taking away from the accomplishments and the feats that Hamashiach Yahweh accomplished in this sinful flesh. So read that. So Yahash, Yahash, go ahead. This is Hebrews 2 and 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. He didn't take the nature of angels. Read. Go but ahead. he took on him the seed of Abraham. The seed... Again, even if Mary is in, without father, how is he the seed of Abraham? Mary don't got the seed of nothing. Go ahead. Verse 17. Wherefore in all things it, it but behoved him. Mm -hmm. Behoved him. Go ahead. To be made like unto his brethren. He was made like unto his. He was made, yes, he is the first creation with the father. We don't disagree with that. He go all the way back to that time. But he was made like his brethren. You his brethren, I'm his brother, we his brethren. We have a daddy and we have a mama. His daddy determined who he was, what nation he was, and what tribe he is, just the same as ours did. All right? So his daddy is Joseph. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. That's what, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Right? Go ahead. In things pertaining to the most high. To make re uh, reconciliation for the sins of the people. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. All right? Period. Now give it to me in the NLT. Watch this. Watch this in this, this updated version, which is going to quantify the hell out of what this is talking about. Go ahead. Uh, Hebrews 2 and 16 in the NLT. Uh -huh. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. Mm -hmm. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. He came to help us. Read. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect. To be like made us. in every respect. What? Like us. To be made. Read that from the top. It says, therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect. To like be us. made in every respect like us. It says, 
that Yahweh Shai was in every respect like us. You got a daddy, you got a mom. Period. In every aspect, in every respect. Having a father is the respect in which you were made. That's one of the respects or the aspects in which you were created. Having an Israelite father that makes you an Israelite of whatever tribe you descend from. Yahweh Shai was no different according to what Paul said here in, in Hebrew. So please explain to me what in the hell you're talking about and why these other uh, uh, people in the Bible are not magnifying this the way you are. Somebody please rationalize this to me, right? So let me go to... Let me read, let me read the NIV. Uh, go, go ahead, go ahead. For this, uh, uh, Hebrews 2 and 17 in the NIV. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, <laughs> in order to become... In order, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest and serve fully in human life. in every way, period. Let's go to uh, uh, go, go Ecclesiastes eleven and five. That's another scripture about being born in the spirit. Oh, I should have had with the other ones, but it's fine. Ecclesiastes eleven and five. Ecclesiastes 11 and 5 uh -huh. as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit of the spirit you know it's not the way of the spirit read nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her wait a minute uh, the spirit is of the bones growing in the woman's womb that's how a baby is made of the spirit any baby dummy scripture said the holy spirit is in all things that's living all things that have life. That's the wisdom of Solomon. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Shut down. You are not qualified to teach. You have been disqualified. Unless, you were, unless you're just going to join the Christian clergy, I'm sure they would love to have you. But amongst this nation that the Most High is raising up through his prophets, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem, Mashiach, Yahweh, Shai, you're not qualified to teach. Go ahead. It says, Go ahead. Nor, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Mm -hmm. Even so, thou knowest not the works of the Most High who maketh all. You see that? You don't even know the works of the Most High. That's clear because you don't even know how a baby is made. Give me Romans 8 and 3. Because he's saying something like basically... A lot of these people they they um, who believe in this, they try to discredit Joseph, which is a part uh, of an attack on the black man, for the record. That's an attack on the black man. But also, basically, they try to say because he's sinful and his forefathers were sinful, he, even though it, what's funny is Eve, through her came to be in the ascendant, through her we all die, she can bear a son. But a man, oh no, he can't bear a son, though Eve was first deceived as it is written. That's an attack on the black man. So let's go to Romans 8 and 3. Because you say that he was made with no lust. He ain't made with no sin. Well, that's fine. Let's go to Romans 8 and 3, which he wasn't made with sin. But he was made by people who were sinful. His 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 lineage was sinful, certain of them men. So read. This is Romans 8 and 3. Uh-huh. For what the law could not do, uh -huh. in that it was weak through the flesh. Read. The Most High sending his own son in the likeness of of sinful flesh in sinful flesh meaning he sent his son to be made in sinful flesh just like all of us is made in sinful flesh with a father and with a mother read and for sin condemned in sin in the flesh uh-huh and then condemned sin meaning he was made in the sinful flesh just like all of us but he denied sin he conquered sin and he conquered death in the flesh showing us and paving the way for us and giving an example for us that we all could do the same if we are in him but you're taken away from that with your madness this is job 25 and 4 how then can man be justified with the most high how can man be justified with the most high I read on or how can he be clean that is born of a woman how can he be clean that is born of a woman so just like the descendants of men are unclean and sinful so is it women it says how can he be clean that is born of a woman that's a dagger. What I wanted was 15 to 14, which says, what is man that he should be clean and he which is born of a woman that he should be righteous? Oh, real quick. <laughs> I just thought about something. Uh, Salakia. Uh, let's go to. 
real quick. I, I, I'll get this at the end. Give me Isaiah 7, because he referenced Isaiah 7 and 14, which is a virgin, right? The vir which is what they go to, a virgin shall bring forth child, which is true. It's a prophecy, right? But they, he, he said that that word virgin means oh, that it does mean a young woman of a marriageable age, but who has not had sex also. He added that into the definition, which is not in the definition. He added that into the definition, which is crazy because why are we having two words for the same thing? That don't even make no sense. But that's all right. We're going to go into the body. First, give me give me uh, Proverbs 30 and 19 first. Let's go to another place that this word is mentioned, and let's see if it means free of sex, okay, which it damn doesn't. And I can't believe you try to sell us that damn dream. This is Proverbs 30 and 19. Uh -huh. The way of an eagle in the air. Uh -huh. The way of a serpent upon a rock. Uh -huh. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea, read. And the way of a man with a maid. The maid. That word maid is the same word for a virgin. The same word that's used in what? Um, uh, Isaiah 7 and 14. But what is the way of a man with a maid when he has sex with her? All right. This is Luke 2 and 22. Uh -huh. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, mm -hmm. were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the most high right so mary had a time of purification right but the time of purification is 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 this is is uh because of this right leviticus 12 and 2 speaking to the children of israel saying if a woman have conceived the seed and born a man child but when did she conceive the seed the holy spirit just put a baby in her she should only be pure why is, why does she need to be purified if this is just a totally righteous birth why is she being purified then you don't know what you're talking about. Shut down. You're not qualified. Shut it. Just shut it down, bro. You don't know what you're talking about. Get, 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 get out of here. All right. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut down. You you're not qualified to teach, brother. Right. So let's now go to Isaiah, and let's read seven and five to sixteen. Because guess what? If this is talking about a literal non-sex men plant the seed birth there had to be two of them let's prove it go ahead this is isaiah 7 verse 5 uh-huh because uh syria ephraim and the son of uh what's that Ramila. Ramila. so what's what so what's going on here historical is isaiah he's going to king ahaz ahaz is king of judah king of judah is having an issue because the northern kingdom israel has been, of course, at this point, became their own nation. They're teaming up with the Assyrians to come against and besiege Judah. So I'll start that from the top. Isaiah's coming to Ahaz. Read. This is Isaiah 7 and 5. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remila uh -huh. have taken evil counsel against thee. He said they're trying to come up against Ahaz, trying to come up against Judah. Read. Saying, let us go up against Judah uh -huh. and vex it. Uh huh. And let us make a breach therein for us. Uh huh. Read on. And set a king in the midst of it. Uh huh. Even the son of uh, Tabal. Yeah, Tabal. Thus saith the Lord God. Read all the way to 16. We're going to read full context. Y'all will read just verse 14, but y'all won't read this whole prophecy. There's a reason for that. Go ahead. Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, uh -huh. it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Read on. For the head of Syria is Damascus. Uh huh. And the head of Damascus is risen. Uh -huh. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, mm -hmm. that it be not a people. In 65 years, what happened? The Assyrians, who it, who the northern kingdom is in conjunction with, later conquered them, right? And brought them over the waters. Go ahead. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. Mm -hmm. And the head of Samaria is Milo's son. Mm -hmm. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe, you won't be established. So Isaiah is telling Ahaz, you have to believe this. So this can happen and you can reign, right? Read. Moreover, the most high spake the most high spake again unto Hazar, saying, Ask thee a sign of the most high thy power. Oh, you want a sign? You want a sign to know that this is true. Meaning this had to happen in the days of this king in order for it to be true, to have him to believe in what was happening. This was long before Yahweh Shai's conception 2,000 years ago. This is, long, this is before the northern kingdom is expelled out of their land. So this is damn near 3,000 years ago that this happened, 
that this virgin conceived. So they would have to have been two virgin births, meaning what? Where is this other guy? Where is this other Messiah? Why isn't he wrote about and talked about and amplified like Yahweh Shai is? Made and created and conceived by such a miracle. The answer is plain and simple. It wasn't such a miracle. It was a man had sex with a young woman. And that young woman had a baby. And that child was that sign. Just like a brother, now he gets mad when I try to liken biblical stories unto what we deal with today, even though we are the people of the Bible. Right? Only a Christian would think like that. Just like now, brother may beseech the most high. Lord, he's in the streets. He's living bad. Lord, give me a sign that I need to slow down, man, because I don't know what I'm going to do. Then this girl call him. She's pregnant. That's a sign to that brother. Now that brother knows, you know what? I need to slow down. I need to give my life over to God because he didn't gave me a sign. He didn't gave me a child. And this same type of instance was Ahaz given a child to let him know what? That this was going to happen. The prophecy was true. It was a token of that. Read on. As it either in the depth or in the height above. Uh -huh. But Azar said, I will not ask. Neither will I tempt the most high. Uh -huh. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Is Look, he said, I ain't even going to ask for the sign. Isaiah said, I'm going to get a sign anyway. Or the most I said through Isaiah, I'm going to give the sign anyway. Read. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? Uh-huh. But will ye weary my power also? Uh-huh. Therefore, the most high himself shall give you a sign. The most high said, I'm going to give you a sign. You, you saying you don't want a sign? I don't care about that. I'm going to give you a sign. I'm going to give you the sign that's going to tell you what you need to do. That you need to believe the prophecy of Isaiah. What's the sign? Read. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. How is he giving Ahaz a sign 700, 800 years after Ahaz has already died? How is he giving him a sign? He's not. That has an initial context to it. Its initial context is referencing to that time period. Its duality to it is referencing Yahweh Shai. Like there are so many dualities to certain prophecies that get fulfilled with Yahweh Shai and also in other instances. But this has a initial context, and this initial context has nothing to do with Yahweh Shai. So if Yahweh Shai's context in which it's used has to do with a woman having uh, conceiving a seed without having sex, then this child would have most must have also been born without sex. There's two virgin births, so and that's the case. Where is the product of this other virgin birth, and why isn't he amplified for his miraculous birth as Yahweh Shai? The answer is no, and none of that happened. They both had daddies. That's the answer. They both had earthly biological fathers that had sex with their mothers in order to create them and bring them forth in the earth. Period. Go ahead. And bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Uh huh. And, right there, there was actually a kid named Emmanuel. <laughs> That's what you don't get. That, that actually happened. The Most High gave that son. Read. Butter and honey shall he eat, uh -huh. that he may know to refuse the evil. That he may know. Did you, was you, how was I born knowing to refuse evil? This child was going to have to know how to. Re he was going to have to learn how to refuse evil. You never read the full prophecy. Why? Because it makes you sound like an idiot, if you would. Go ahead. And choose the good. Uh huh. Verse 16. And choose the good. Yeah, I was shy. Didn't have to learn to choose good. He always chose good. Because from a babe, the Holy Spirit, in its fullness without limit, resided with him. Go ahead. Verse 16. For behold, the child shall know to refuse the evil uh -huh. and choose the good. Uh -huh. The land that thou abhorrest uh -huh. shall be forsaken of both her kings. That's right. By the time that this land that y'all abhorrest was forsaken of both kings, this child shall know how to do this. Meaning the Lord was saying, by the time this child learns enough to, to be able to decipher good and evil, both of these, these kings that you fear are going to fall. That's what he said. Meaning... That prophecy is limited to that time period and has a duality that came and fulfilled again during the time of Yahweh Shai, but its initial context cannot be ignored. Meaning, again, if you believe that that means a literal virgin who never had sex and conceived to see without sex with the man, that means it had to have happened before that, which would then take away from the miraculousness 
of what you're saying the birth was because it wasn't the first time that ever happened the only time that ever happened it doesn't make sense shut down shop you are not qualified to teach the word of Yahweh. period you're not point blank all right stop playing give me john 1 and 45 and luke 2 and 48 let me john 1 and 45 quick fast let's see who mary said Yahweh shah's father was the angel came to her right wouldn't she know who her who the daddy of the son of her son was right well, let's find out. Let's go to John 1 and 45. This is John 1 and 45. I don't know why anybody don't address this. Read. Philip findeth Nathaniel. Uh-huh. And saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. That's right. And it would mean that he had to be like one of us. Read. Yahushai of Nazareth. Of Nazareth, read. The son of Joseph. The son of Joseph. Nobody corrected him on that. Nah, he wasn't the son of Joseph. Wasn't he really his daddy? Nobody corrected him on that. That's period. The son of Joseph in the Bible. Why didn't anybody take that out? Why didn't anybody change? Why didn't anybody correct him? Give me Luke 2 and 48. Let's see who Mary said her baby dad was. The baby dad of Hamashiach Yahweh was. Let's just see. This is Luke 2 and 48. Uh-huh. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou... Salah, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I. Thy father and I, read. Sought thee sorrow. Joseph and Mary is looking all around. God didn't come down off his throne and look for Yahweh Shai. Joseph and Mary did. Joseph identified, Joseph, I mean, uh, Mary rather, identified Joseph as Yahweh Shai's father. Everywhere Yahweh Shai go, he's being identified as the son of Joseph. Why isn't he correcting nobody for that? If this is if that's blasphemy to say, it's clearly not because nobody was ever corrected for calling Joseph Yahweh Shai's father. So shut down. You're not qualified to teach it. You don't know what you're talking about. All praise Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai for revealing this understanding and not keeping us encapsulated in Catholic doc and dogma. Period. Matthew 22 verse 22. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. The same day came him came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now, there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased. Right, so the Sadducees are asking Yahweh Shai, if, 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 we're, if my brother has a wife and, you know, he dies without having a kid, a uh, kid with her seed under. Which one of the brothers can ra get to raise up, uh, raise up seed to that woman instead of the brother? Um, so this this was a a, a common thing back two thousand years ago, and we were still keeping the law and upholding the law, the Mosaic law, which uh, is the same incidents that happened with uh, Jacob and Heli being brothers, Heli dying and Jacob raising up seed for him. Hence, giving them uh, Yahweh Shai two legitimate genealogies. That that this whole understanding wasn't amplified till the time of the Roman Catholic Church, really. Anyway, you know. Yeah, they had the force. Seeing that Paul said Romans one and three, Yahweh Shai is the seed of David according to the flesh. They had the force marry into the genealogy in Luke the third chapter. When you're dealing with a uh, 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 them trying to promote the virgin birth, so. The early church fathers did not subscribe to a virgin birth. We talk about Julius Africanus, Eusebius, all right, and, and, and multiple other early church fathers who knew that one, Matthew 1 was um, the, the, the natural genealogy, and Luke 3 was uh, by the law of Deuteronomy, when your brother dies, you raise up seed unto him. 